right, good day. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. It is Thursday, June the 28th, 2012. I have the uh, pleasure to do the interview today with uh, Ian Moody um, for Congress and Independence in District Number 5 for the U.S. House of Representatives in the uh, great state of Washington. Um, it, the, his opponent is a Republican and a Democrat, and um, and he's the only independence or, or third party candidate uh, that's uh, active in District Number 5 today. So Ian, it's a pleasure, it's nice to talk to you today. and. Um, if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about uh, what what drives you, what gets you up early, or you know, and or keeps you up late at night, and and, and why um, you decided to uh, put your you know get on the ballot, and you are on the ballot too, right, sir? Yes, uh, that's correct. I am. I am actually on the ballot, and I just like to thank you, Thomas, for for getting in touch with me and giving giving me this opportunity to get my name out there and, and have my voice heard. And, because, as you know, it's, it's difficult for independent candidates to, uh, to be able to do that, especially um, the, with uh, the machine that Democrats and Republicans have behind them these days, especially some of my competitors up here, which we'll get into. It in. um, but as far as, you know, yeah, you know, it's a good question, what drives me? And I think just in a nutshell, it's just justice and liberty. And um, there's a lot of injustice in America right now and throughout the world on behalf of, of uh, I guess you could say, American interests. And then um, there's a, uh, there are continuing to be more and more infringements on uh, Americans on American liberties. And so um, one of the things that really helped me to begin to witness this up close and personal is my um, involvement as a medical marijuana activist here in Washington State over the last five years. And so I began, you know, just sort of as a, a grassroots activist working on trying to find better ways to provide medical marijuana to patients in need in this region. And we received all kinds of, of, of um, support. Uh, impediment on behalf oh, of the federal okay. government yeah. and um, oh, that's right that's been in the news i mean obama said so yeah we um, we were we were hit the hardest here up, up in eastern washington um uh, they really made an example of us up here and so that was really my first experience of just up up close and personal um negative effects of just the 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 dinosaur that the federal government has become and how they are, they are no longer in touch with the needs of American people. And also, um, um, also what I learned is that state and local officials, as far as my, my main issue is concerned, which was medical marijuana at the time, were, were very supportive of uh, medical marijuana uh, activity in our region. Um, and so were, lo so were local law enforcement. But uh, at every, every step that I made to try and get local officials to assist us in order to stay open, in order to be able to assist patients, they would tell us that their hands are tied because of because of uh, issues at the federal level. And you get to the federal level, and it's you, like I'm sure you're aware, it's it's all bureaucracy. It's it's all it's all about um, special interests and entrenched special interests and old grudges that go back, you know, 30, 40, 50, even 60, 70 years, and so. That's what you know has really inspired me to just get in and do what I can to to take um, to take power away from a uh, centralized um, a centralized government that no longer looks out for the people. Well, Ian, that's the one thing I've noticed when you said that it kind of struck a chord here because that seems to be a common theme of people I've interviewed, and that's what we're doing here at LibertarianProgressive.com is interviewing independents and third-party candidates um, because. You see that uh, the independent registry is, is a large, it, there's more independents registered to the vote in the United States than Democrats or Republicans. And um, like Einstein said, just keep trying the same thing over and over, expecting different results is insanity. So uh, there are more choices. I mean, you know, what's some of the uh, qualifications? Someone that's honest, someone that you can trust, someone that's going to keep their oath to the Constitution, who's competent, and who's not going to sell out. Maybe someone who's also going to read the bills before they sign 
behind them and have some principle and um, you know be motivated by electing the people instead of the party um, or you know any other special interests. So that is heartening to hear that you know one of your main themes is civil liberties. And let me just read off the um, five main issues that you put on your website, and then we can go through them in a little more detail. I mean, you put here for your issues and. Um, uh, the economy and jobs, health care and social security, military and the Second Amendment, agriculture and hemp, and the war on marijuana. Now, you, if you went to like a typical, even though these are big issues that most of the people agree with, you, if I went to like, you know, a Republican or Democrat site, if I looked at the issues there, it's 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 just going to be a bunch of pandering and, and stuff they've been promising us the last 30 years. And uh, so, um, so let's just take a look at the economy and jobs really quick um, and and maybe all this ties in together somehow too but um, what what is uh, your um, uh, you know prescription um, for the economy and the jobs okay yes um, it, it all is going to tie back to just um, what what is it that the federal government can really do to to assist in you know helping the economy and, and helping us to create jobs and just from my perspective, I feel like we have to just get back to the fundamentals of what the purpose of the federal government was in the first place and back to the fundamentals of the Constitution, which is just limited federal government. And so um, as you go on my website, I kind of talk about a focus on, on uh, local, small, and mid-sized businesses and um, sort of rebuilding the economy from the ground up. And... Um, I think um, we've become dependent on this this gigantic federal government, and any time you go to a debate or you you're interviewed by um, mainstream media, they want to kind of pin you back into these. Well, how are you going to spend more money in order to improve the economy? Or um, you know, I haven't haven't done any interviews I'd say with what I would consider far right uh, media yet, so I haven't got to end up, get, gotten the other end of that, but like I said, the questions are really focused on the bureaucracy in its current form, whereas my objective is to begin to deconstruct that current bureaucracy, begin to, to get back to the Constitution, the fundamentals of the Constitution, which are limited government, um, sort of fundamentals of, of federalism, which is more state and local control. Maybe and 50 can, laboratories of freedom. I mean, now, you would say the go federal government has, has some responsibility. What would the uh, main focus, like, what should it be focused on instead of focusing on, you know, busting in, you, you know, people trying to buy medical marijuana shops um, and stuff like that. Yeah, I think if you go back to this, the, the formality of the Constitution, it, it's, it's um, setting taxes, um, and, and it's, uh, I'm sure, as you noticed, uh, following the news right now, it's all going to depend on the interpretation of the Constitution, but um, it, it is a, the fundamental of the, con the fundamental aspect of the Constitution is limited government, and so um, as far as uh, uh, touching on keeping the government from kicking in your door, what, what have you. Uh, we just have to get back to the fundamentals again, which is uh, taxation um, uh, and uh, and other 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 well, elements. You, you, you seem to have a theme of civil liberties. Um, like, uh, what about you know? It's there. The government should be there. We shouldn't fear the government. You know, if anything, the government should fear the people. That's Thomas Jefferson. But um, it's uh, it's supposed to be there to protect us. It should be a good thing, if anything. You know, uh, of course, it's um, always throughout history has been abusive or abusing its power, um, or it, it just tends to go in that direction. But I mean, an ideal government would. Um, be the other way around. Instead of busting in people's houses, uh, it would be protecting the people's houses, right? It would be just the opposite of, of cer certain situations that's going on right now. Yeah, exactly. And that's another aspect of the Constitution, which would be uh, national security. And and you can maybe we can bring that to to uh, back to medical marijuana. Is it really in in our our national security interest for uh, to be going to war with with our own people? As far as uh, and, and the, as far as civil liberties are concerned, well, and so it's just not uh, yeah. it's not the uh, the responsibility of the federal government to 
to, you know, to be infringing on our, our rights of our person, uh, infringing on our Fourth Amendment right to to uh, 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 to be secure in person and, and to our privacy. And so, um, well, isn't as far as, uh, isn't as there far polls as, like about fifty percent of people in the country have tried it at one point? I mean, I'm sure you've seen similar polls. At least forty percent. So I'll just give it the, um, in, you know, the, just for argument's sake. But um, th so if there's equal justice i mean either we let everyone um be free i mean just for using that if they haven't committed any other violent crimes towards anyone else or abused you know anybody else or if we're really truly just we should just um lock up 40 percent of this whole country and maybe that will rise raise some eyebrows oh yeah i think i think we're in, in a good direction with with uh, marijuana and Hopefully, with personal freedoms in that area, and I think. But to touch on your original question, as to, as far as what can government do to uh, stimulate the economy and jobs, and I, I think again, the best thing the government can do is is to get out of the way. And and yeah. let me just touch on what the left would would have you believe is that we can spend more money and spend more money in order to in order to improve the economy or create jobs, and that just isn't the case at this point. All that does is uh, all they do is increase the size of government, which, which continues to uh, increase this top-heavy bureaucratic, bureaucratic society that we're living in. Um, we end up with more chiefs and fewer Indians, and these chiefs have to, f have to find ways to uh, stay relevant and um, find ways to uh, uh, continue to, to bring in monies or revenues into their departments. And so that's one example with the, the DEA is it's just this dinosaur of a department that is, mm -hmm. is, is, is finding ways to sustain itself at the expense of medical marijuana patients. I mean, they use the drug law as a cover and, and kind of just to inv override, um, you know, the Bill of Rights. I mean, usually, like, um, you know, you have to have a judge's, um, you, you know, consent to to you know elite to search and seize and then there has to be you know reasonable evidence and then they have these special drug courts and then you know you have these private prisons which are trying to pay um, legislators to have you know like three strikes and you're out type laws so that they get more benefits um corporate welfare basically and um uh, so it is it is a vicious s cycle, and it's like a cancer that's just going to eat itself. And um, you know, it, it seems like cruel and unusual punishment to, to put someone behind bars. I mean, you only have one life to live. Life is short. And someone that doesn't hurt anyone else that's uh, taken a natural plant as a substance, if they're not harming anyone else, and it's weaker uh, high than alcohol, um, to, to put someone like that behind bars, I, I don't know how people can sleep at night. Um, and, uh, I mean, this is a civil a libertarian issue this isn't just um you know a drug issue per se i mean this uh if 40 percent of the people have tried this that means everyone in the entire country knows somebody dear and close to them that um you know they probably wouldn't want to be in prison and another sad tragedy of all this is that hemp has been made illegal along with this and um so i'm glad that you mentioned that because um you know we're funding i don't we we're funding a lot we're sending a lot of money to farm farmers to grow corn and that's raising the corn prices because we're subsidizing it and corn is in about like 50 percent of all our food so it's raising the prices of all our foods and we could be using industrial hemp for a lot cheaper uh, and it grows year round it's a good seasonal crop and we basically our country was built on it and then there's other uses you can make uh, biodegradable plastics out of it and um, much more uh, nutritional benefits and etc so I'm glad that uh, you're making um, agriculture and hemp uh, part of the issue you want to expand on that a little bit Ian? You bet, you bet. Let, me, let me first just backtrack real quick and, and expand on on sort of this, this top here heavy bureaucracy that is supported by the drug war and I actually um, just want to elaborate on what I call I call the two layers of, of fat that are that are supported by the drug war and that perpetuate and, and enhance one another. And we'll start at the bottom layer of fat, which would be uh, drug traffickers and uh, drug dealers, petty drug users. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, in my experience as a, as a medical marijuana uh, advocate. There was a lot of infiltration into the medical marijuana industry on behalf of black marketeers and and individuals who abused uh, abused uh, multiple drugs and uh, made efforts to 
use marijuana as a cover. And so that's sort of the, the bottom layer of fat. That, that, uh, that Those same group of people also tend to, and don't get me wrong here, there are a lot of people in this country who definitely are in need of social services, social security insurance. But a lot of these people also have found a way to uh, uh, find ways to abuse all, all sorts of social services while they're trafficking drugs on the side. And so that's sort of the bottom layer of fat. It's very expensive in all kinds of ways. It drains law enforcement resources. It drains social service re resources. Um, these families uh, send children to school who are unprepared um, to, to be in school and also are, are a distraction and a drain on schools. And so then we have the, the top layer of fat who benefits from, from this, this, this bottom layer of fat which is which would be social workers, uh, probation officers, judges, attorneys, uh, case managers, uh, uh, um, just at yeah, I mean, if they really need a job, let's, let's have them and do so, something constructive, you know. Like, yeah. So these, this is just extremely expensive, and it, it just uh, touches back on the fact that um, it is. It, the, the government is behind the times, um, and like you said, 40% of people have tried this, and it, it's just a war on the American people. And now as far as, um, as hemp is concerned, and this is just, this goes back to, I guess, the, the history of, of, of when, of how marijuana was, was made illegal in the first place back in the 30s, and so hemp got, got lumped in there. Um, Efforts yeah, hemp doesn't of, even get you high. It's just it's yeah, it's, exactly. it's called industrial hemp, and um, it was used to make rope and parachutes in World War II for the United States Army. Yeah, and during the 30s, um, there was a big uh, uh, push uh, on behalf of special interests out of Washington, just to just to make it simple, and then out of the South to demonize uh, marijuana. It was it was an effort to um, to incarcerate blacks to. Uh, and deport Mexicans back over the border, and then also uh, special interest in um, in timber and and uh, and cotton uh, uh, jumped on this bandwagon and used it as an opportunity to to uh, corner the market as far as some of the products that industrial hemp can be used to produce. And like you said, it's just extremely versatile. It, it, you can produce you know almost four times. Henry Ford product. made his first car out of it, like like instead of making the car out of metal, it's like one of the first fiberglass cars. And um, you know, there's a video of him like whacking it with uh, like uh, you know, kind of like a sledgehammer or something. That's how exactly. durable it was. It's, it's, uh, it provides so many solutions, and so with something that 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 is so versatile and provides so many solutions, um, it, it 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 could put so many other uh, industries out of business, and so that's why you see such a strong push to lump it in with with marijuana, uh, to demonize it, and really. It, I mean, and we import it, don't we? I mean, so we. Yeah, again, yeah, that, exactly. We we import, we import. Um, Australia and Canada. So much of it, Canada, 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 Europe, China. You know, which is not good. We have got, we've already got a trade deficit with China, and so. To add to that, um, through not allowing our farmers to just grow it here locally, right. is a detriment. So, um, in fact, we import about four, four hundred nineteen million dollars worth of, of hemp products wow. from Europe, Canada, and China alone. How much? Fourteen point uh, nine million dollars no, worth. Four hundred nineteen. Four hundred nineteen. Wow. And that's so. That's that's uh, money that we could we could be producing locally and, and currently Canadian producers are, are averaging about two hundred dollars per crop per acre I'm sorry and so that's money that those Just are deficits going that down the drain can't yeah. afford you know it's already uh, compounding the deficit or the trade deficit that we have with China well, and, uh, well, let's go through real quick because, um, like, um, now let's, how about just real, real quick, what about health care and Social Security? You did put that up as an issue, and um, I'm sure a lot of people would like to know about that. Yeah, I think, you know, I talked about limited government and, and where, where would, where does Social Security and health care fit in as far as, as far as the Constitution, and that's been de debated for years. I just look at the role of government over the last century, and, Take, for instance, uh, what we've gone through, we, starting out at the, at the turn of the century, uh, the Depression, the First World War, the Second World War, um, it was necessary for us to have a strong centralized government and, and, and to uh, develop programs and departments to help us to keep the union together and to keep it strong. And so uh, the crisis at that time was, were the World Wars and the Depression. 
one of the biggest crises we're facing right now and into over the next 20 years or so is going to be health care. And so even though um, it, it's, it's easy to argue that it's not the role of government to provide health care or, or to be involved in health care, I think we're facing a national crisis if we don't. So what's your find solution? I mean, I, I think um, so people are far, yeah. from the left. Yeah, as far as Social Security is concerned, I think there's just a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, posturing as, as far as that's concerned. Uh, you know, you do a little research and you find out that um, we've got a, a, a huge uh, surplus as far as the trust fund is concerned, and a lot of people aren't aware that the, the trust fund is not is not where we receive funds to pay for services. The trust fund is a surplus. And no, so you're, that, you're totally right about this. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. In the 90s... So the trust the fund has been we, rated... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. It was, it was rated in the 90s. The reason why we were able to balance the budget was on the back of Social Security. and um, But they have IOUs. So if you consider all those IOUs, because Social Security was supposed to be in a separate trust fund, but, but it was rated, like you said, and um, if we consider all those IOUs that are supposed to be part of it, it's actually in a surplus. Yeah. Yes, correct. And so um, I think uh, just as a real, real easy, so, you know, just some simple, straightforward solutions, just raising the retirement age. And, and I've, I, I don't know if it's just rhetoric and posturing, but it, it appears as though the baby boom isn't willing to budge on that. And so it's going to be the responsibility of my generation to take the hit there. Um, I'm saying, you know, maybe possibly beginning in 2020 or sooner, if we can get if we can get people to accept that, and then also um, basing uh, benefits on on um, price price index rather than um, rather than uh, rather than income, um, then I think that we'll we'll be able to make a few tweak a few adjustments to make sure that Social Security is solvent. Yeah, like um, Rand Paul introduced some legislation with some people, like if you just like um, gradually raise the retirement age, like it would take about 20 years just to raise it, like like each month it would raise like um, like another month, or each year it would raise another month or something. That would keep it solvent for almost ever. And uh, um, what about, um, uh, you know, health care? I mean, because like you said, I think that is a big issue. Yeah, and health care, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, these are all tied in, and then we just obviously had a huge... What about a public option where you don't have to have a mandate to buy it? Like, you know, how like maybe the post office pays for itself, um, Social Security has a surplus, if maybe there was a public option, but it would just be based on... Yeah, I think that's, to run it. that's where this, the difference between a public option and a mandate. If, if we have a public option, then can we really afford to fund fund this program as proposed as far as uh, the Obama care, you know, just to put it in, a, to put it Well, the Supreme bluntly. Court just ruled today that um, they upheld it. They, they not under exactly. the Congress law, but because they counted as a tax. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so I think um, the, the um, what, what I was trying to touch on before is just that uh, it, it is, it is going to be the responsibility. I, okay, no, to backtrack, if a mandate is is going to be necessary in this case because it is a crisis, and um, we do have to be able to afford to uh, to provide for this program. Um, uh, a public option, if it's an option, then you you might find that uh, find a lot of people opting out. Um, now, like you said, the Supreme Court did vote uh, did decide in favor of, of many of the provisions in this bill, including the. The mandate. So I think uh, a lot of people expected the, the court to go the other way. Now, what this does is this allows the American people uh, this fall to get a mandate uh, by just by choosing who they send back uh, to Washington. Yeah, and, and you know the Republicans are going to say they're against the mandate, but you know what? It was the Republicans who first introduced this in, in the 90s. They're the first ones that came up with the individual mandate. I mean, that's why it's you know also known as Romney Care. And um, so I think it would be more sincere having an independent who might um, have some alternate views instead. Yeah, definitely. I think I'll, I, I, I hope to, be, to to bring that that view to the table where um, you know it, the both parties have um, have. Uh, propose similar uh, measures or, or provisions, and um, and that uh, right now what you're seeing is is particularly posturing and uh, uh, jockeying and, and uh, people 
uh, just gearing up for the election. And so I'll try to be that, that voice that's down to earth and reminds people that uh, there are ways for us to compromise and um, that we do need to find a solution on health care because it, it is a national crisis, just similar to the way uh, some of the issues we dealt with during well, the maybe Depression. Maybe it might not be as much if we, um, you, you know, return back to our civil liberty foundation and um, because I think sometimes people underestimate how civil liberties might be able to, might affect an economy, you know, the, the spirit of the country, um, how people are doing. If people are being treated unjustly, I, I think that can uh, affect the economy. Now, I do see here your final issue here is military and the Second Amendment. Um, do you think there could be some savings in our military spending over the last 10 years? Oh, definitely. I, I think... I think it's just really common sense at this point for a lot of Americans that the best thing for us to do is, is, is get out of the Middle East as soon as possible. A lot of the um, rhetoric that, that suggests that we, we need to stay there is based on special interests, either uh, on behalf of, of the oil industry or on behalf of, uh, of um, special interests on be or an agenda on behalf of yeah contractors or an agenda on behalf of the left to be to be reelected at this point, and so we really just have to, to well, drive. That's why I'd be afraid electing a Republican for the individual mandate because you always get the opposite with the Republicans and the Democrats. You want it like um, Bush and and the Republicans had a full Congress, a full House. They had a full House. They, they, their cards were revealed. They had a full House in, in the in the beginning of this uh, century. And then Obama had two years where he had a full house. He didn't even try to uh, introduce a you know, public option and, and all this kind of stuff. So you always get the opposite. I, I think if you did get the Republicans, they'd probably keep the individual mandate. So that's why it's important to select someone who's not, um, you, well, who's uh, sincere um, instead. Yeah, definitely. You're, you're always going to see that flip-flop, and it's, all, it's always going to be dependent on being reelected and or uh, pandering to a special interest. And I've just witnessed that already, just how how much easier it is for me to just participate in forums and debates and in, in my ability to be sincere. And I find my opponents sort of being trapped in, in having to pander to their donors and um, and then also their party. And so I'm, I'm really enjoying that freedom right now. And I, I think some of the constituents out in our in our region uh, pre, are, are find it refreshing as well. Well, I think Washington's pretty popular for independence, right, among, like, probably states in general. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think you definitely have them in a box. I mean, Obama was supposed to be the constitutional scholar. He's the one who passed NDAA, he's doing all these uh, drones, um, and he's keeping the Guantanamo open. I, I mean, delayed I Iraqs. We're still in Afghanistan. I mean, he, and it's the Republicans are the ones who raised up the debt um, so much. So they, they do really give you the opposite of what they campaign on. And uh, it's uh, it, we, you, we, there's people in this fifth district that have a real choice, don't they? I mean, they can give you two years and see how that works out. And now, what do you think it's going to get, take? I mean, um, you know, maybe by 2014 people wake up. Maybe I think it's time now. I mean, people want to change. This is the way you bring change. People that are in the Tea Party, Occupy Wall Street, I mean, their main goal has got to be legislation, and you're not going to get legislation unless if you have people in there who are willing to um, introduce bills. And so we don't need to have a violent revolution. I mean, we have the answer right here. It's to elect um, a, a good wave or a block of people into the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, uh, it's, it's so you, do you believe you believe in the people's Second Amendment rights as well? So it looks like, I, I mean, um, you can really draw in people from the left and the right. I mean, concerning all those civil liberties, I think you would get as much support from progressives, Green Party people, especially there's no Green Party candidate in your districts. I mean, um, there's this one uh, candidate that's in... Um, I think it was Vermont, and he was endorsed by the Libertarian and the Green Party, both. Um, uh, Gary Johnson and Jill Stein endorsed him, and he was an independent. So, I mean, I think, uh, you, you know, if people um, you put on their thinking caps this w w winter and this November, uh, you know, you should have a legitimate shot to, to win. I mean, look who you're running against. Yeah, definitely, and, and I'll just I'll, I'll just touch back on, on the Second Amendment and um, sort of, the, the pride that, that people um, feel up here, independence, um, and, and also our ability to keep and bear arms. There, there are many hunters up here, especially in the northern counties, Ferry, uh, Stevens, uh, Ponderay County. These are all 
very independent, uh, libertarian-minded people. Um, they, they enjoy their privacy. They enjoy uh, hunting. They enjoy their space. They are very much opposed to uh, federal involvement in their lives in any uh, way, shape, or form. But they're also very down-to-earth, very humble, modest, moral people. And so I think that's that's a group of people that I want to, to I can reach out to, and that are are going to be more than willing to support me. And um, and uh, in that same vein, um, you go south of, of Spokane, and um, you or I'm sorry, south of that of that region into Spokane County, and then also into Whitman County, and Walla Walla County, where you run into more affluent. Uh, uh, more somewhat more progressive but more moderate uh uh p- people who tend to vote republican but still um are still need to provide services to people and if you want to touch back on um the, the second amendment um everybody in this region tends to be in agreement that the civil liberties uh, it goes beyond anything else and that um uh, we find a lot of uh, people in agreement that that gay gay marriage is acceptable in this region. Um, that that a woman's right to choose is her right to choose. That you can that are you you are uh, free to possess and bear arms. That you have the freedom of speech and freedom of religion. They are strong believers in the in the Fourth Amendment, right to privacy. And so it's it's a very um, it's almost a microcosm of America up in this region where you where you have um, both left and right, but it, we, we find a way to cooperate here and we find a way to agree that civil liberties and personal freedoms uh, go beyond everything else. Yeah, and I mean, I voted for Ralph Nader before. I voted for libertarian candidates before, you know? I, I mean, it's just there, there are some issues. I mean, if we don't have our civil liberties, and I don't think I, hardly anything else matters, really. I mean, the other stuff matters, but it only matters, you know, as exactly. long as I have my civil liberties. And, and, and having and having the excuses to continue to increase the size of government and, and increase spending, the, the left kind of shoots itself in the foot in that regard because it, it increases the size of government and then it inadvert, inadvertently allows the government or, or uh, groups or, or uh, special interest groups who want to control the American people to get in and take advantage of that larger government that is um, so bureaucratic. It's, it's so difficult to conduct any type of oversight over a government of this size. And so that's why it's important for independents to come in and say, the, the federal government can't make your lives better it, it, by spending more money. The federal government can make your life better by getting out of your way, by by uh, reducing the size of the federal government, because by having a large federal government, it, it gives it more leverage to impede on your Fourth Amendment to privacy and to be secure in your Right, place. absolutely. There's a good and bad. I mean, like, so you believe in a social safety net, and I think most people do. And um, so you can, um, you, you know, tackle the issues on the left from there and civil liberties, and then from, you, you know, the right with, uh, you, you know, the um, t- taxes and, and spending and, and things like that. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's, it seems like common sense. And whenever we elect one of these, like the Democrats the, and Republicans are both wrong. I mean, the Democrats that call what we have now capitalism, it's not capitalism, and they can't blame it on that. At the same time, the Republicans who call Obamacare socialism, that's not socialism, that's fascism. When you merge corporation and state, it's anything but socialism. So they're both wrong in, in how they're labeling it everything and uh, we just need some common sense like you said some cooperation someone from the grassroots who can bring you know progressive issues or just American issues together most definitely and, and I hope to I hope to do that you know I, I'm not I, I I've received about probably five hundred dollars in donations at the point a lot of my well, we need of, people con- like how can people uh, contact you? I, I know you, you had some plans here, so you got to run. But um, I'm looking at Moody M O O D Y 2012.com. And that's right. We have a, a button on there that you can donate with, uh, donate directly to us through PayPal. And um, you know, we can we can use the money, but at the same time, um, I, I want to be known. I don't want uh, to to be like Kathy McMorris Rogers, my opponent, has over a million dollars in their coffers. She's already spent about 500000 of it. And um, I, I want to be known as the people's candidate. I think it's clear that she is, is bought and sold just by looking at the, the amount of money that she has in her campaign. And then, um, 
And so, yeah, um, go ahead and donate to my campaign. But one, one of the things that we can really take advantage of in this modern age is just technology, um, emails, you know, send, send out money, uh, email bombs com. Have you ever, to your friends. Meetup.com. Yeah, you guys take advantage of those websites. If you get on, if you're on Facebook, you know, don't just click the like button, click the share button. You know, there's so many ways to, easy ways to just get get somebody's name out there, get the name recognition, and then um, just just with uh, the deconsolidation of of um, the flow of information as far as as the internet these days, it's it's a lot easier, and people just need to know that that we do have the power with the internet. We don't want to just sit and allow. Uh, New York City and Los Angeles and Washington and D.C. Uh, to tell us who to vote for based on how much money they have in, in their um, in their coffers. Um, it, it's got to be based on on values and morals and also a vision for the future that is based on common sense and it is void of partisan influence and um, influence on behalf of special interests. Yeah, and someone who's not sold out, which I, I can tell you, you sound like a very sincere person. I mean, I would be. Um uh, you know, honored if you, if you were my congressperson, and even if, like, you're going, to, I mean, you're running for the U.S. House of Representatives, so this can affect the whole country, even though I'm living here in Florida. I mean, I certainly hope the people in the 5th District um, uh, select you. I don't think we have an independent running in our district. So, I mean, these are issues you're going to be voting on, things like the Patriot Act and things like the NDAA, SOPA, PIPA. I mean, I don't trust the Republicans and the Democrats. I mean, and their approval ratings are in the single digits. And, um, you know, I, they, they wouldn't have any shame if they if no one turned out to vote. I mean, if people just stayed home, they're, they're just going to be like, whoo, well, that was just a lot easier. So that's not a way to demonstrate the, the, the proper way, which most people don't even show up, is, is to elect somebody different that's out out of the uh, two-party paradigm, the um, an independent or a third-party person, and um, yeah. now you don't want to just select anyone. That's why I'm doing this interview here, and I can tell you have common sense. Yeah, you. I think you would take your oath to the Constitution seriously. You would research the issues and and not just um, sign away our rights. Um, can I give your phone number out too, just in case um, anyone might not be able to? Uh, uh, see the website here. It's this, the one on your um, uh, website here. Yes, yeah, the number that you contact me at, and then right. before before you give out give out that um, phone number, right. um, I just wanted to um, just uh, reiterate, or I'm sorry, follow up on, on some of the things that you were talking about. Um, as far as um, uh, taking advantage of, of the internet and getting and, and using uh, the internet to get uh, get people elected, uh, and Oh, so you're, this is not a live, a live broadcast. I totally forgot what I was talking about. Well, you're talking about the internet, and and this is okay. um, like this isn't. Uh, we're not placing well, they, they, bets on I'm who sorry. think we're going to win. We're actually participating. You know, trying to you know elect someone to win. Yeah, exactly. We're um, we um, both both of these these parties are are just pushing a party agenda and. And that's that's what I wanted to touch down on is how am I gonna how am I gonna get my my name and my voice and my philosophy out there and the, and one of the things I'm doing and what I've been doing on doing as a marijuana activist for the past four years is is citizens initiative drives and where I have uh, marijuana related petitions circulating in six eastern Washington cities currently, which will make marijuana the lowest law enforcement priority. And so that gives me a, a way to be out work um, interacting directly with citizens. Um, to find out exactly how they feel about issues and, and being able to, to be out interacting directly with them. I'm finding that Washington, D.C. is extremely out of touch, and so are our current, our current politicians. Yeah, you need to do a press release with your um, like newspapers, call all the local radio stations, whether they're uh, you know, liberal or conservative, um, you know, meet at VFW meetings, um, Ron Paul meetups, yeah. um, you know, Dennis Kucinich meetups, just whatever. I mean, just get your voice yeah. out there, let people meet yeah, you, build so rapport, and make them want to, you we're know, We're working on that. We're, yeah. we're working on We've got the Citizens Initiative, and, the, and I, I, I get out and meet people that way, and I've got plenty of local press um, on that issue. And, and then I've also uh, got another Citizens Initiative so circulating in Spokane where the Spokane City Council recently made efforts to impede the citizens initiative process. So what I did is I, uh, I put out a citizens initiative to uh, reform or repeal their changes. So I know that's kind of hard to follow, but there's also a citizens initiative 
uh, regarding that issue, and that's another chance for people to get out and, and fight back. And now, uh, to elaborate on that initiative, that, that, that law that was passed locally was basically, in a nutshell, passed by a, a group of four conservatives who sit on our city council, who are four lackeys of my opponent, Kathy McMorris Rogers. So this is just my effort to show that, you know, the little guy can push back. The little guy does have power through Citizens Initiative, through, in, through the Internet, uh, uh, to get, get their voice out there and get their issues addressed. And then finally, I'm just, just going well, on. Let me ask people a question who might be listening to this. Like, who do you think represents you the more? Like, his Democrat opponent or his Republican opponents um, who's bought and paid for? Or, you know, someone who's... Um, you, you, you know, like uh, it, humble, and, and but um, but has strength to, to to put themselves out there, get themselves on the ballot. Who cares about this country? And you know, who's starting initiative referendums? Um, who's uh, you, you know being an activist in in, in civics? And um, I mean, I, I think the choice is clear. I, I mean, it's it's I, you know, it's 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 just so clear that uh, imagine if now what what do you see as a vision? What do you think we could accomplish? I mean, maybe. Maybe, do you think this could be a year where we could get like maybe 50 or 100 being optimistic um, non-Republicans or, or Democrats um, into oh, the gosh. U.S. House? I mean, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that isn't that the only way the media's and, and the establishments ever going to pay attention? I, I mean, um, imagine they wouldn't be able to ignore that, would they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, I think we need to do that, and I, and I feel like more people participating on the internet there's a lot of a lot of hype and there's a lot of kind of a vibe for a new a new political party or a new movement or or to get the both democrats and republicans out of the way but a, a lot of people still believe that it's impossible a lot of people still believe that you have to vote for one or the other and i find that just as i go around just you know um well uh, you know i'll be voting for you but it's gonna you know it's gonna be difficult for you to win uh, running as an independent but you've got my vote and so, um, you know, we just want to, we will just keep pushing forward. And I, I, I'm, you're probably more in touch with how many independents we have running out there than I am. And so you, you, you'd have a better grasp on what we should expect as far as that is concerned. But I'm going to, I'm going to continue to push, uh, just my little boy next door campaign. Just well, I think, a, the, you know, a lot of people little, might, and, I'm and sorry. Hopefully other people will be inspired and, and, and continue in, the, in that same vein. Well, it, it does seem overwhelming to a lot of people, like um, changing the system, and some people are changed, are scared of a sudden change. The thing is, we don't have to be scared. We can do it somewhat gradually, but with, um, you know, with a little bit of quickness. Um, by, it doesn't, it's not all presidential politics either. I think what makes it less overwhelming is that when you just focus on, let's say, for example, District 5 in Washington, someone who's going to go to the U.S. Congress, um, Ian Moody, as uh, an independent who believes in the Constitution and common sense, and he's going to represent the people. If you just folk bring it down to just that one district, and then everyone just focuses on their district, I mean, we might get Romney or Obama or whatever, but we also might get a significant block in the Congress. And then if we do good, maybe that might open up the gates for two years later to maybe eventually have like a hundred independents or third party oh, and, and then so on, on and on. Definitely. I would, I would definitely like to be a part of that first wave yeah. to get in there and, and just prove to people that common sense and, I mean, this um, 21st century has started out right. I mean, first, the re well, of course, there's some tragic things, but the Republicans, for a couple of years, had a full House, and so did the Democrats. They've both had the opportunity, and, and we can't give them any more. I mean, we just can't afford it anymore. And that just comes down to decentralizing uh, communications and, and taking advantage of the fact that we do have decentralized communications. We don't have to allow... Washington D.C., New York City, to tell us that the only thing that matters is the presidential election, and and, and this will allow people to to communicate with each other locally. Yeah, um, it's a lot more out. obtainable too. It's not so as overwhelming. It, 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 yeah. It'll allow for a lot more oversight on behalf of citizens and local media to begin to to begin to focus on what's your what's your mayor doing, what is your state representative doing, and how can you uh, communicate with that person to make sure you get what you need or what you're interested in. Yeah, and um, well, um, let's see here. Just uh, do what. Just uh, just kind of a fun question here. Um, I've asked a couple of people. It's do, do you have like a favorite ex politician or, or president? Oh wow, I am. Um, I'm really. 
I'm really a local focused individual and so all the names that I would mention would be like local and state representatives. Um, well, that's fine. Yeah. I would um, I would just have to say three individuals that I really look up to and that really inspired me to get involved in politics locally would be um, three city council members and um, they kind of represent the spectrum of politics and, and the first one is a council member named John Snyder and he's basically known as a, a, a progressive politician here locally. He, he does a lot for to work towards improving the environment and um, and, and improving transportation infrastructure. Then we have uh, a council member who his name is Bob Apple, and he's a very he runs as a Democrat, but he will vote independently. He, he will he'll never uh, toe the party line. He, he does what's right for his constituents. So that's why I like him. He's just a dogged independent. Yeah. Another individual who kind of represents the right, which would be council member Steve Salvatore, and he's. He's a conservative. He's a fiscal conservative, uh, uh, um, uh, social conservative, without uh, without the bigotry and the hate. And so, those are three individuals that helped me to to uh, look across the political spectrum and figure out how can I how can I best represent this region. Well, I think that answer just told me a lot about you that I, I wasn't expecting, and I think that's great. I think that you know kind of makes your case and and and. Uh, well, I, I guess I'll just leave it at, at, at that, Ian, and I'll stay um, up to date here. I, you know, maybe we can call you back uh, towards, like, October, November, see if, um, you, you know, how the momentum's picking up. And we've got we've got primaries in on October 7th, so, okay. I'm sorry, not October, August 7th August. Is, our, is our primary, and it's a uh, top two, regardless of party uh, party preference. Okay. So um, we'll have that, uh, the August primary, there's four running, we've got, Mick Morris Rogers, who's, who's the Republican incumbent of eight, and she's working on her fourth term here. Uh, Democrat Rich Cohen, he's a film producer, and then we have uh, Republican Randall Urat, who's he's a constitutionalist. He he runs every year, um, and so we have to go through that primary first. And so I hope to just get as many people to pay attention and know that they're. There is another option besides a Democrat or a Republican. Yeah, it's, and um, just on the issues um, and, and, and uh, sincerity, I, I think um, you, you know you would make a difference, and it would be great to see you on the House floor and championing uh, civil liberties. Uh, that's something that um, I think that's you know the heart of it, and uh, that can bring us back to. Uh, peace and prosperity, um, and uh, and at least um, we can sleep good at night um, if you you know we're f fighting for um, you know being freedom fighters. Um, so well, it's it's been a pleasure, Ian. Is there any um, the, the, the last words here for this interview tonight, this Thursday night? Oh no, I just uh, just go ahead and thank you for the opportunity as an independent. Every every opportunity to speak with a journalist or. A member of the community is, a, is another opportunity to help me refine my campaign. You know, especially running as an independent, it's pretty lonely, and so it was really great to talk to you. I think I cut you off earlier when you're about to get my phone number out, so I'll get that. Okay. Yeah. That's five area code five zero nine two five one one seven one five. That's five zero nine two five one one seven one five. And again, the web website is www dot moody twenty twelve dot com that's moody twenty twelve dot com and we could we could use some donations uh, you know we money does help in in politics and so uh, check out my website get a hold of me yeah don't you know, donations to you and, door door. and um and and I'll do what I can to 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 be your representative and your voice in Congress. Thank you, sir, and uh, I think you made your case um, quite well, and uh, so now it's up to the people. Um, what do they really want? And I think the issues you're mentioning um, is, but um, we, but people have a choice. And um, well, Ian, I'll say goodbye to you right after this interview, and thank you for your time, and, um, and Godspeed. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much.